You ever wanted to burn your house down for $7? You ever want to make a fire hazard just because you can in the worst DIY project imaginable? Well, do I have just the thing for you. Today, I decided I wanted to build a dollar store soldering iron. Recently, I fell down the YouTube rabbit hole of people building their own sketchy soldering irons out of pens, batteries, electrical tape, and all sorts of hack together stuff. So I went to my local dollar store and decided to piece together the sketchiest fire hazard I could using only dollar store supplies. Now, when you think about it, a soldering iron is basically just a piece of metal that gets really hot, right? So my goal was to buy whatever I could find that looked like it would draw the most electricity in the sketchiest way. They had everything from fake security cameras to incense plugs and all sorts of other weird electronics. After that, I needed something that would actually conduct the heat and could be used to melt the solder. And for better or worse, there's a lot of stuff at the dollar store that conducts electricity. <laughs> in the end, I spent $7, and now it's time to build the soldering iron. Uh, I guess let's go over everything I bought. We've got a essential oil diffuser that I already started taking apart. It is just two wires connected to some sort of resistor that heats up. We've got pens, all sorts of pens. The thought here is I've seen some people online use the bodies of these pens so that they can actually hold on to their DIY soldering iron, I guess, and not burn all their fingers. So you kind of like pull the little pen out of the tube and you just use this, put your whatever high voltage wiring in there. And now you've got yourself a little handle. So you got that. Pencils, uh, got these for the graphite. Um, it's apparently supposed to be a great conductor. Picked up a nine volt and these double A's. I feel extremely stupid though, because I opened them all. Checked out this thing. Oh yeah, little light switch, LED light thing. I figured maybe I could use this just basically as a battery holder if I wanted to try to use nine volts or something. This uses triple A's. Don't know how I missed that, but I don't have any triple A's. I didn't buy any triple A's. So. Okay, so first things first, I feel like I just wanna try melting the solder with literally just the, the Glade plug-in thing. Let's see how that works. Every time I see this thing, I'm just like, man. Um, so this power strip allegedly has, I believe a 15 amp circuit breaker. So I kind of just want to cross the leads on this and see if the circuit breaker actually triggers. Only one way to find out. Oh, and I brought gloves. I don't even know if these gloves are going to insulate me against electric shock, but at least if things get hot, maybe. And for this, aside from just the thermometer or whatever that I was using before, I've actually just brought out some solder. Now this is rosin core solder. Uh, it's by a brand named Aven. I think I got this from Radio Shack because they were going out of business. It says it's a 60-40 alloy, 2.2% flux, 1.2 mil diameter, oh, sorry, 1.2 millimeter diameter, and it's 20 grams. Uh, so let's see. First things first, let's let this thing heat up for a bit. As we let this thing continue to heat up, I'm just gonna... That was stupid. I really... I'm gonna get some tape. I'll bring it back. Sure, oh wow, these gloves are dirty. Ooh, smells awful. This solder shouldn't melt at 160 degrees. The typical melting range of solder is 190 to 840 degrees Ooh. Fahrenheit. I did just shock myself with it though, through the gloves. So that's good to know. That was stupid. But no, we're not getting anything through the solder itself. It's not, not getting hot enough. So that being said though, can we short this though? Oh! Yes! Did not pop this. We did melt the solder. We actually exploded the solder. Okay! So... This gets hot enough to melt solder, you just have to use it wrong. Maybe solder was the worst choice of conductor I could have possibly used for that. Wow, I'm glad hot solder didn't just go in my eyes or anything. That was fucking dumb. It is uh, multiple days later and I'm back and I've decided to cheat. I was originally not trying to use any like, you know, micro USB cables and wallets and whatnot just because my dollar store didn't have any that were actually a dollar. Like these are the kind of things you'd find there for five bucks or whatnot. 
And so I was like, oh, come on, it's not in the spirit of it. Um, but at this point, I'm kind of done with playing with AC power, so. For this one, we're doing something a bit different. The USB brick I've got here is five volts, two amps of DC power, and we're basically just gonna be shorting that across one of the dollar store Christmas hooks. To do this, I first chopped the end off an old micro USB cable, and I stripped back the wiring to expose the positive and negative wires. From there, it was as simple as looping them around either end of the Christmas ornament hook, and we were good to go. You can see here, we've got our negative lead on, and we're just gonna put the positive down here. I think to test this thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it laying on the solder. Wow, my solder is fucked up. And if it melts, that means it's getting hot enough. And then we can actually try holding it and soldering something. Okay, here's our test setup. We've got our soldering iron, our power strip. Okay, phone charger soldering iron. Take one. Literally nothing happened. For some reason, the little DC power supply I had started clicking and buzzing, which was kind of weird, but the wire literally didn't heat up at all. Nothing happened. Yeah, on the tip of the solder, we're getting 76.6. This seems to be doing a whole lot of nothing. I'm going to swap our USB block that we're using. Maybe this one has overcurrent protection, you know, something, something dumb. And uh, we'll see if uh, uh, even crappier one works. If we plug this in here, grab our little USB block, Yes, so our USB block is not broken. Now what's extra fun about this is this can basically act as our USB block but with a screen so we can see whether or not it's working or not. You can actually see we've got USB ports here on the side, both 5 volt 1 amp and 5 volt 2 amp. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition our soldering iron and then plug into that 5 volt 2 amp port. Okay. Oh. Our clock immediately died. So our issue could be that maybe this isn't providing enough resistance, therefore it just immediately shorts anything out that it's plugged into. Yeah, because that is dying pretty much immediately. So as a potential solution to this problem, because I've already uh, broken up this graphic pencil and I'm kind of done with carving it away, I'm just gonna try using a piece of uh, normal mechanical pencil lead and see if that actually has more resistance than our metal wire to see if it won't short out our USB block as quickly. It actually will allow power to flow. Let's go ahead and dump out one piece of this. This is 0.5 millimeter, 12 HB lead. To be honest with you, it's actually about the same size as our metal wire, so it should make swapping it out pretty painless. Okay, so once again, We've got our piece of pencil lead suspended between the positive and negative leads. We've got our little alarm clock that we'll use as our, our rig here. And uh, I guess we'll just plug it in and see if it shuts off the alarm clock again. Oh, immediately shorted out. Just, oh, we are smoking though. Okay, so the pencil lead is a huge difference. That actually got hot and fast. I have no idea why the wire didn't get that hot, but uh, I can smell it burning in here. That thing was hot, hot. Just as another test, I'm actually gonna put that piece of solder across the pencil lead now and plug it back in. We'll see if uh, we melt any solder. I don't know if you get that showed up on camera, all that smoke. Okay, plugged back in now. You can see we did short out again. We are getting smoke again, Jesus. That being said, despite all the smoke, oh! It actually got hot enough. It melted a ball of solder. Let's see, let's put it on there again. Oh my gosh, you can see we're charring those copper leads and you can see we're actually ballooning up the uh, the wire, or the, sorry, the casing surrounding the wire, that heat shrink. Oh, and we melted more solder. So that's, that's actually accurate. Even though it's a super slow conductor, graphite does get hot enough to melt solder. Holy moly, and our alarm clock still works. That is unexpected. Well, here it is, folks. The world's sketchiest soldering iron. An alarm clock, a piece of pencil lead, and an old phone charger. So I wonder if we can hold it and actually solder something. Now, for our soldering test, what I have here is a basic USB-A breakup board with a four-pin header. The goal is gonna to be to solder all four pins to the breakup board, something that should be incredibly easy for a normal soldering iron. But of course, what we have here is not a normal soldering iron. And before anyone says it, I know, I probably should have used a fume extractor, 
I'm pretty sure most of the smoke coming off this thing is the plastic coating on the wires just kind of slowly burning away or maybe it's burning graphite off. I, I don't really know, uh, but I know it's probably not good for me. Oh, and that's the end of the soldering iron. I think we uh, broke through the graphite. Either that or it melted. One of the two. Let's do a little uh, after action report here. Okay, let's look at the quality of our uh, our solder joints. Oh man, yup, that's something. Uh, I'm just gonna hold it up to the camera. Oh, little ball of solder fell off. So the headers on. We may only have connectivity or conductivity on just three pins, maybe. <laughs> now as for the moment of truth though, we gotta plug something into this and see if it works. Now our testing setup is pretty simple. As you can see, we've got a flash drive here. We've got the actual breakout board that we soldered up with the, you know, DIY soldering iron. And then we've got a breakout board that I soldered up using an actual soldering iron just attached with some jumper cables. So, I mean, by all accounts and measures, this is basically just a USB extension cable at this point. Now, I don't have the most faith in this, but uh, as a wise man once said, fuck it, we ball. And so, the ultimate test. Let's see if we can mount the flash drive on our laptop. This flash drive has exactly one photo on it. That's all we need to load. I hope this doesn't kill my USB port with these uh, interesting solder jobs. Oh, was this it? Was this the sign of life that we were searching for all along? Malfunctioned? Uh, no. The USB malfunctioned. Uh, this thing doesn't work at all. Well, it does not work. This was probably uh, a complete waste of time. So, I also have this. This is a uh, taser circuit. So you power the positive and negative lead. Uh, I've used nine volt batteries, you know, whatever. And this end, uh, it arcs across. I don't know the exact voltage. I got this on eBay, um, but I was also curious. I wonder if the arcing current gets hot enough that you can actually melt solder with it. So I kind of want to try soldering using a tasering iron, a taser, a tasering iron. Yeah, I mean, that's a good enough name. A few moments later. Well, there are reasons to not use an iPhone for taking video. And this is one of them. Uh, as a recap, um, I taped our taser circuit to the battery packaging so the leads would be a nice equidistant spacing away, and then we've got a working taser and the single double A. So now the current plan is to get some solder, get, you know, some face protections because that last piece of exploding solder was a little stupid, uh, and see if we can solder using a tasering, uh, taser. It is also now dawning on me that this completely violates the idea of a dollar store soldering iron, but I feel like I kind of just got nerd sniped when I saw the taser circuit upstairs and I was like, damn, that would make a really cool soldering iron. So this is current project, let's go. Okay, we're back with actual safety protections. Goggles on. Okay, let's see if this thing can melt solder. Also, yeah, I should probably be wearing long clothes, shirt, something, but like, it's probably fine. <laughs> We've got our now charred and ruined solder here. We've got our battery. As they say, I'm a trained professional. If trained means I have read a basic tutorial of electricity and how it works, and if professional means I'm an amateur YouTuber with uh, under 100 subs. Uh, actually, I think I just hit over that recently. But, uh, but yeah, so, so now we've got our battery just positioned nicely, so I should be able to just tap one side. Oh yeah, we've got a taser on demand now. So with this side, I'm gonna throw my goggles back on because I'm not trying to die. Okay, and so with this hand, I guess I'm just gonna hold some solder and uh, what can we solder it against? We'll solder it against this. Just use this as our little, our little solder collector and let's go. No. I feel like that's really bad for my vision. And also I can like smell it in the air. Is that like ozone or something? I don't know. 
Okay, a taser with a single AA battery is a bad soldering iron. What about with two AA batteries? Three volt taser versus soldering iron. I don't wanna move this thing around too much. Damn! Okay, this glove's going off. Still no. Oh, a three volt taser is still not strong enough to melt solder. Very unfortunate, but very scary and loud. I've got to admit. So chances are you're wondering, uh, was there a point to all this? Um, I'd say there probably was at some point along the time I was filming. Uh, I'm not quite sure anymore. I had fun making the video though, so if that counts for something. I kind of want to ramp it up next time, you know? Like, I was thinking about using maybe like an MRE little like food packet thing that heats up. Maybe see if that gets hot enough. I've also seen people use just straight up lighters with like a piece of wire they can heat up. I think making like a fully non-electronic, like chemical only soldering type of video would be a lot of fun. Maybe I'll do that in the future. That sounds even more dangerous though. I mean, you could just buy a blowtorch, I guess, or like DIY a blowtorch. I've also thought about making flamethrowers. I guess that's kind of off topic. I think that'd be kind of a cool video. Just mess around. That one's kind of just an excuse to make a flamethrower though. So yeah, I guess. Maybe there isn't that much of a point. Does any video really need a point? I guess someone just gets bored enough to film some content and put it on YouTube. Like right now, I'm just sitting in a uh, empty room talking to my phone. So, is there a point? I don't know. Thank you for watching. Uh, I had fun making this for what it's worth. It's really weird trying to make eye contact with my phone, so I've been practicing doing that. On any note, that's about all I've got. Because you watched this long, uh, here's a plushie I got in Japan. It's of a train. I like it a lot. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say. Check out the next video. Uh, let me know if you...